Next up, trying out the painting technique called object source lighting. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Interstellar Modeler. This is April of 2022, and you might have noticed I have a new logo. Um, I'd like to pay a big thank you to Andrew Lavolo, who's one of our subscribers, and uh, he recently sent me an update of my logo that I originally designed way back, uh, gosh, I think it was nine years ago now, when I started the channel. Now, I'm not a graphic designer, and I've always thought it was a little plain, but it was functional. And uh, But Andrew recently sent some updates, and I just love them. As you can see here, this is the Interstellar Modeler logo, and he also designed one for Hot Off the Bench and also redesign the avatar that I use on Facebook as well as a couple of other places. So thank you Andrew, I really do love them. They're really sharp looking and if you'd like to take a look at more of Andrew's work, he is a graphic designer and illustrator located on the East Coast. Link to his website is below so you can see more of his beautiful work there as well as his work with independent comics. All right, moving on here now, uh, Wonderfest is just about a month away, and uh, I originally intended on this video to be about the USS Grissom, because that is the next model kit I'll be working on. However, I've decided to put that on the back burner for now. I, I will still be building that model kit, but uh, in preparation for Wonderfest, I'm going to be working on a few other projects I hope to bring with me. And um, since we don't have a lot of time, I've got to get started on this stuff. I've already actually finished one project, which I'll show you at the end of this video. It's a figure from the anime genre. Now, um, transporting models, because I have to fly there from San Diego here, is uh, can be a bit nerve-wracking. And I would love to bring my uh, partisan X-Wing diorama that I just completed, but I just don't want to risk breaking anything after all the work I put into it. So the easiest thing for me to transport are busts and figures. Uh, last year, I made one exception. I was able to bring the Battlestar Galactica launch tube, but that comes in its own little enclosure, so that was easy to transport there. Um, so this is what I have planned so far to bring. First is the Wrath of Khan bust from Blackheart Models. This is something I finished earlier this year. And since the theme to Wonderfest is a celebration of the 40th anniversary of Wrath of Khan, I thought it'd be appropriate to bring him. Also, I think I'm going to be bringing my Ray Harryhausen collection from Blackheart Models. And I have this figure here of Mr. Freeze, which uh, is one I intended to bring to Wonderfest of 2020, but of course that got called off and it's been in my display case ever since. Now this video is going to be all about object source lighting. This is a painting technique that I first came across at Wanderfest a few years ago. Let me show you some examples. So first we have a beautiful Lord of the Rings bust in which the character has been painted with a few different tones to give the illusion that a red and green light source is shining on it from above. And here is an amazing rendering of Wolverine done in this fashion. And the Frankenstein monster with an orange glow off to the side. And of course this technique can also be applied in grayscale. So for this project, I'm going to be using this sculpt here that I just printed of the Robert Pattinson Batman. This, of course, is the latest film, which I really enjoyed. And uh, what inspired me for this are the promotional posters that were done for the film. And of course, there were a number of pictures released for promoting the film, all of which the character was bathed in this red light. So I found this best on cgtrader.com and I'll put the link below, but I really like the way it has some really nice and great contour and details that I think would lend itself well to painting it in this fashion. The sculpt also comes with this base. Now both have been primed with a gray filler primer, so I'm ready to begin with applying our base colors. Well, I don't think you'll be able to appreciate in this lighting here, um, but I do have a few different colors now applied onto our bust. I'll go over those colors here in just a second, but before doing that, I want to make mention that I did find a number of tutorials online that talked about object source lighting. And one in particular I'm going to refer to here is from lightminiatures.com. I'll put the link down below. And this is the one I was trying to follow in particular step by step here, but it just wasn't looking right. Now, all of the tutorials that I came across had to do with smaller miniatures. Uh, maybe that's one reason it just wasn't just wasn't going along okay. What I decided to do was to veer away from that tutorial and kind of go with what I think is going to work right here. Um, but one of the things I'm going to be paying close attention to are these rules that all of the tutorials mention. And I want to quickly go over these with you. Again, this is from lightminiatures.com. And the first rule that they mention here is the cardinal rule is that lit areas always appear brighter than surrounding unlit areas. Number two, 
Lit areas appear no brighter than the light source they are lit by. Three, the apparent color of an object is affected by both the color of the object itself and the color of the light falling on it. Four, light moves in straight lines. And five, the strength of the light diminishes with the distance from the object. What I'm going to do now as I go along here is I'm going to relate those rules to the steps I'm following. And the first one I'm going to talk about then have to do with the colors and therefore have to do with number three in which the apparent color of the object is affected by both the color of the object itself and the light that is hitting it. What I've done now is I have used a red mix for all of these different elements here um, because our figure now is going to be bathed in this intense red light. So there's not going to be a lot of contrast between the different parts of the costume. Again, this is the picture that I'm using as a reference now. And uh, so for uh, the cape and cowl now, in regular lighting would be a either a very, very dark gray or black. I decided to use a 70-30% mix of red and black. For the armor, which appears to be kind of a gray, a dark gray in regular lighting, I did a gray, red, and black mix of 50, 25, 25. And then for the bat wing that you see on his chest, as well as the straps that hold the chest armor there and some of the under armor underneath the shoulders. And I also use this color for the creases and the folds. I did a 70, 20, 10 mix of gray, red, and black. So the colors I'm using now are these craft paints that I've thinned down so that I could spray them on with my airbrush. And remember, as I am using these colors now, I am filtering them through this here. And this works extremely well to avoid any sort of splattering and gunking up of your airbrush. Okay, so what we're going to do next now is work on the facial tones. And uh, typically for Caucasian tones, I use a beige red and mahogany brown mix. Um, I'm going to mix in red, much as I did with these other colors, because again, if you look at the picture here, we're going to have a very bright reddish color on the left-hand side and a very dark shade of red here on the right. Okay, well the flesh tones are completed and to get this shaded pattern here I ended up using this picture here as a guide of our bust under a light source. And again to create the lighter side I used the mix of beige red and mahogany brown and had some red mixed into that. Because remember we want all these tones to be tinted red since our main light source is red in color. So for the darker side here, we added in just a bit more mahogany brown and I also added in some ebony flesh and I just added more and more of that the lower I got onto the face. So the darkest being underneath the chin. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking so far here now and hopefully what will tie it all together now is the application of our red that will represent our light source. So the plan is then to go with a darker shade of red and to mist that pretty much all over. And as we get closer and closer to where the light source is brightest, which is going to be here, again just looking at our sculpt now, under that light source, uh, we're going to start brightening up the red more and more and intensifying it. All right, so following our rule where the light goes in straight lines, it is the brightest at the point of contact and will diminish in intensity as it moves away from that point of contact. So the colors we'll be using then is for the overall shading. We're going to use this holiday red mixed in with just a little bit of black. And as we get closer to that point of contact, we'll be using the engine red and mixing in just a little vermilion here. Oops, not that one, this one here, at the point of contact. 
Oh, and by the way, one trick I wanted to share with you, whenever I'm working with this sort of setup here, and I've got these wells filled up with paint, and um, you know, it's one thing if you just have a small amount, but if you have a good amount here, you don't want that to go to waste. So one way to prevent them from drying out, if you have to step away from the project, as I did today, is just to take some paint bottles like this, and just place them on top of the little wells. And when you come back, they'll still be ready for you to use. Now before applying the engine red, I decided to lay down a lighter shade of almost pink color uh, just to highlight where the brightest areas would be. So this will help me direct the airbrush and also to be sure that those particular areas will be a little brighter than their surroundings. All right, so this is how it's looking. I'm not quite sure how I'm feeling about it here. Um, I do plan, by the way, on getting rid of the glossy surface there, but um, again, what I had planned on doing was to just deal with the two shades. I've got these reddish tones uh, that are darker here on one side, and of course the brighter red tones that are coming from our, from our light source. And um, I was going to leave off the third color that you see in the poster. There's a blue glow off to the right-hand side. I wasn't confident I could spray on a third color and make it look right, but I think that's what I need to do. In fact, I did post this on Facebook, just kind of get some feedback because it was just not looking quite right to me here. And that is a suggestion that a couple of people had was to apply yet another tone here. When I do uh, look up other busts and figures that are painted in this fashion, you actually do see multiple colors on these uh, types of um, busts. In fact, the ones I showed you early in the video are definitely like that. So um, I think that's what I need to do. Now, one thing I've always done with the channel here is to show you when things, uh, not only when things go right, of course, but also when things don't go quite as planned. And um, I am committed to show you how this ends up looking, whether this looks good or not. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and apply them the bluish tone on this side and show you the completed bust, whether it looks right or not, in just a second. Okay, so here we now have the completed sculpt, and as you can see, the blue tones have been added to the right side of the bust, which I think makes it look more complete. I'm not sure that I fully succeeded here with this exercise in applying object source lighting, but I think it's not a bad first attempt. The sculpt was found on cgtrader.com and designed by OKNC, and I think it has a pretty good likeness for both the facial features that are visible here, along with the details of his costume. I should mention that OKNC has a number of other designs on CG Trader that have really nice likenesses of various characters, so if you care to check it out, the link is below. As printed here, the bust measures nearly 7 inches in total height if you include the stand, and it certainly can be printed larger than this. So I think I succeeded in applying some decent graduations of colors here, starting from the red side. As you saw, I mix in various tones of reds to create the overall base color, then increase intensity as I approach where the light source is brightest on the sculpt. For the blue, I simply apply blue tones using Vallejo Game Color Bright Blue mixed with a lighter sky blue and some white. Both sides were enhanced using oils for the shadows and highlights, and yes, I'm experimenting with oils now as a way of creating deeper variations in color. And I actually first used them in the next sculpt that I'm going to show you here. So in my opinion, I think this was a first good attempt, and I do think that it looks better in person and in certain types of lighting. I'm just not sure that I completely succeeded in capturing the illusion that is possible with this technique. So no doubt, this technique is going to take a lot more practice, and I do intend on trying this again. If you have any other comments or suggestions here, well, I ask that you please be kind, first of all, <laughs> and leave them below for the rest of us to learn from. All right, well, let's move on now to this other sculpt here, and this is Faye Valentine from the famed animated series Cowboy Bebop. I had been meaning to watch the show for years, but what finally got me to do so was the live-action production of the show released last year on Netflix. This represents a departure from my usual subjects, but after having seen the shows and coming across this sculpt on CG Trader, I just had to give it a try. The figure measures 6 inches in height and includes the base that you see here. It is a beautifully detailed figure that was comprised of 13 different pieces. I came across this on CG Trader and it's designed by Eddie DeCross 3D, and I'll provide the link below. I painted the figure in sections beginning with the upper torso, which consists of the head and breast section. 
This was then fitted onto the shirt, which was painted next. And the hips, legs, and boots were finished last. I applied the flesh tones mainly with an airbrush, as I wasn't confident I could achieve the smooth transitions I wanted along the legs. The upper body and hips were painted by hand, and I used oils to enhance shadows and highlights, which worked out quite well. After having learned how to use them in my oil painting endeavors, I felt more confident with applying them here, and I think I'm definitely going to pursue this further. I think it's a great likeness of the character, and it was a fun figure to paint. I really enjoyed both the animated and live-action shows, although they ended up being quite different. I'd highly recommend watching the animated series first, which consists of about 26 30-minute episodes, and after viewing them, I can see why it's considered a classic in this genre. Eddie DeCross, by the way, has a Spike Spiegel character available, which I may try to finish before Wonderfest, but I'm just not sure I'll get to that. I'm definitely taking Faye to the show. Well, I guess it was a little ambitious of me to think that my first attempt at this would be good enough to display at Wonderfest, or at least to meet my expectations to do so. Uh, but since it didn't, I'm not going to be taking Batman to Wonderfest. I do hope to, however, revisit this technique again sometime soon. Uh, I hope you found this of interest. Uh, no doubt it takes a lot of practice to uh, get a handle on this, and that is the beauty of the 3D printer, being able to print up different figures and busts without too much investment. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel. Certainly leave any suggestions uh, as you followed along here if you have any to leave about this particular subject. And I am going to shift gears now to another project I hope uh, will turn out well enough to bring to Wonderfest, and I hope to post that video in the next week or so. And also plan on trying to post a hot off the bench here before Wonderfest as well. I've already got some great submissions for the slideshow. All right, guys, it's always great hearing from you, and I'll see you then in the next one. Take care.